In today's video, I use a few extra details. I designed new engine parts in Blender. I bent metal flaps. Also, I installed new guns in the wings. I make new rivets one by one. I measure the red dots. And of course, I have a need for minor weathering. Hello fellow modelers, or rather, Joy Tsuitachi. I received from Eddard this lovely new zero in 48 scale. And because I think it's time for another crazy detail aircraft model, I have also a few upgrade parts. Including new wheels, landing gear, flaps, gun base, tailwheel, lovely resin engine and cockpit. The plastic is lovely. Parts have beautiful surface details, soft rivets and panel lines. Incredible that it is small for Tate scale. The kit has complex interior details. Primarily the cockpit could be difficult for beginners, but on the other hand is more realistic. The Zero is between the Spitfire and Messerschmitt the most iconic plane of World War II. So let's make the legend. I think it will be fun. The first improvement is detailed resin cockpit. Eddard recently switched from resin casting to resin printing. The advantage is that the prints are more stable and precise. Also, it's easier to remove printing supports than large excess mold runners. Don't get me wrong, I will replace many parts during the assemble process, but that doesn't mean that the plastic kit is horrible or something like that. As you can see, the difference between the plastic and resin details is almost negligible. Therefore, you can build the beautiful models even from a cheaper weekend editions. So don't worry, you do not need to spend the savings to make an excellent model. Japan manufacturers use iconic blue metallic primer for the interior, also called Aotake. An excellent life hack is to dilute paint with a leveling thinner and preserve excess paint for future use in cheap 5mm syringe. Then you can apply paint directly to the airbrush, which saves time time. This pre-diluted paint preserves for a few months. Someone recommend Tamiya Metallic Blue, but I found more interesting Mr. Color 57. According to historical research, Aotake shade depends on plane manufacturers. So the conclusion is that it doesn't matter. I sprayed the cockpit, including the seat with a silver and then applied chipping varnish. The varnish allows to remove the top green layer with the water. The result is lovely sketches. I like water-based acrylic paints for paintbrush. The drying time is only a few minutes and they are odorless. It is hard to paint instrument panel gauges, so great that they are included water slide decals. It will nicely copy underneath details if you apply a strong decal softer. And the dark wash makes the details optically more pronounced. Lastly, handy is to make a cover glass from a clear varnish. As you can see, the cockpit has insane details, like a gun sight with a reticle. It is shame that it is only small 48 scale and all details will be hardly seen. I know, I have more resin parts than the plastic ones, but it is really enough? I want to achieve something similar like Focke 190 which I made 2 years ago. 
Consequently, I am cutting out engine panels with a razor saw. By the way, it is perfect tool for all modifications. I visited Duxford and Imperial War Museum recently. You can find there racks of late versions of Zeros. And you can notice a fire partition and lovely oil tank. They are located between the cockpit and the engine. There are no available details for this, so I opened Blender 3D Editor and designed new parts. Then I realized that the early version of Zero was completely different, so I returned to the drawing board and designed new ones, which was correct for my model. By the way, it was also essential to design the rest of the engine. I printed new parts from resin. The fitting is crucial, because I must place parts close to the edge of the fuselage as much as possible. Therefore, it is essential to bevel resin and plastic parts. After all, it is lovely detail and will make a model more interesting and unique. The 3D models are available for my Patreons or on Cult 3D. I am still at the beginning with the details, so the next one is the most important. Yes, the stunning radial engine. The free technology allows printing the whole block from one piece. Even so, there are spare plug wires, which you must bend to the needed shape. I am not a big fan of these photo edge parts, because they are too flat. Therefore, I removed all the wires and replaced them with lead ones, which are easier to shape. The engine should be black, but if you want to make the details more pronounced, you can use the dry brush technique with a silver paint. It is a minimal amount of paint and partly dry on the flat brush. I want to change the shade to more brownish. Good for this is color filter or wash. It will also create a basic weathering. The flaps of the radiator were usually heavily weathered. I achieved peel off paint with a chipping varnish. The engine looks dull and dark, therefore it needs lighter shades. You can make the exhaust more brown with a light rust. It will make the engine optically more interesting. Ok, now we can put the engine aside and make more details. The next ones are lovely flaps. Again, the construction is simplified by 3D printing, therefore everyone can assemble them. It is good to have a photo edge metal bender for a precise right angle shape. You can create your own for a few dollars from a metal ruler. I have a video for this by the way. I use for gluing metal and resin parts ordinary super glue. I accidentally applied glue on the details around. Luckily I have a super glue deep bonder, which dilutes and cleans even dry super glue. The new kits are phenomenal and mostly easy to assemble. I like that, because you have more time and mood for painting. If you want to install flaps, you need to cut out bottom plastic section, and that is all. If you have watched my older builds, then you know how difficult it was to prepare the model for the flaps installation. This zero kit is more straightforward. Last but not least improvements are gun base for wings with a lovely 20mm cannons. This time I don't need to preserve plastic covers, so I can destroy them freely.
the details fade nicely and you can only restore the panel lines. It would be best to be careful with the extra thin glue. Try to apply only a small amount of it, otherwise the plastic could create ugly sink marks. I prefer filling seam lines with a super glue. You can clean excess paint from a plastic with an ordinary isopropyl alcohol. I highly recommend gluing flaps with a slow drying super glue. If you apply the flaps obliquely, then you have more time to correct the position and orientation. I'm glad that I decided to make these details because it looks lovely. There must be also engine holder construction. I am making it from styrene profiles. I have a kit of the early zero version without landing hook. In the point of fact the kit has it, but it must be filled. The best filler for large gaps is two component epoxy party. The rivet lines near seam lines are partly destroyed or too shallow. I do not have a rivet wheel with a proper tooth pitch. Thus I am restoring shallow rivets one by one with a needle. Then we have a missing lines here. Ok, I don't have a proper tooth pitch, but the deviation is only 50 microns. So you cannot notice the difference. Another lovely improvement is resin wheels with patterns and logos. And more robust landing legs made from metal. I can preserve at least plastic propeller, however drilling excess holes and making details more rounds of a razor saw is good. I am imitating soft scratches on the aluminum with a white paint.
Zero cockpit is a small greenhouse, therefore precise spraying masks are handy. This antenna part is too monolithic and primarily there should be two of them. I am making a new one from copper wire. Yes, this is better. Ok, let's prepare model for painting. I am covering already painted sections or details of a black foam or masking tape. You can see that the surface has some grease and dust. Try to clean the surface with an isopropyl alcohol before spraying. You will increase adhesion and durability. I am spraying primer on seam lines or filled sections because you can expect imperfections there. I am restoring bolts with a flattened hypodermic needle. You can make many handy and cheap tools on your own. I have a need. Need for painting. Finally. I want to make the plane after some use. You can make some scratches around the cockpit and maintenance areas. Therefore I am spraying silver first and chipping varnish over. I am using proper zero shade from Tamiya, because it's tricky to mix it. Interesting is that the zero has been primed with a red salmon shade according to photos, so I can use it and make some shading. I am spraying it according to pan lines and rivet lines. The model has only one color camouflage, so it's horribly dull and it will be fun to make it more likable. I decided on the interesting sun weathered machine from May 1941. The fuselage behind the cockpit and part of the wings has lighter shade than the rest of the aircraft. You do not need to use masking tape, because the transition should be smooth. Now the promised scratches. The chipping varnish reactivates with a water. You can make a scratches with a paintbrush, but more precise is wooden toothpick. When the work is done, fix the result with a clear lacquer varnish. Otherwise you can accidentally make more chipping when you want it. Edart has new decals printed with a laser printer. They have some advantages, however large one color decals have noticeable printing raster, which can ruin the whole model. Therefore I am cutting a mask with a cutting compass. The red circle is easy to do, so everyone can make it. I like the transparent masking sheet because it's more straightforward to apply it to the direct spot. Try to spray a soft layer primarily on the edges. The wet layer can flow under the mask and create ugly stains. The advantage of the masking is that you can use any shade you want and primarily paint soft shading. It looks much better than decals. Great for masking ground shapes or curves is ordinary electrical tape. I use small labels from a decal sheet. I apply them with the decal's chemicals. I mentioned that the edar decals have one advantage. Yes, you can remove the top transparent film with a odorless thinner. The result is a lovely smooth layer that looks like a spray. Now I am unifying the surface of a layer of a matte varnish.
I am removing the excess paint with a toothpick, because my masking skills are imperfect. If the clear parts fits well, then you can use PVA glue. This is the last moment when you can enjoy a relatively clean surface. I am not too fond of it, because I cannot see lovely rivet lines and details on it. Therefore, let's make it more interesting. I made my fresh wash from a white spirit and oil paint. The surface is relatively bright, therefore try to avoid black or dark brown paint. I made highly diluted wash, therefore final effect is subtle, so there is no need to clean it out of the surface and rather make it accumulated near rivet lines and pan lines. I am using pure white spirit and clean brush. Suitable for this is synthetic one. The white spirit is aggressive and can easily destroy natural fibers. The weathered surface looks ok, but it's still not interesting. Therefore, I think we can play more with our oil paints and test some new approaches. What about imitation of a stressed surface? I am painting highlights near the rivet lines and then blending them. It is handy to have a good quality oil paint with a soft pigment. I know it looks weird now, but I hope it will be more attractive after completion. Now I am blending oil paint with a dry brush. It is essential to spray the model with a matte varnish first, because it works like a sponge and oil paint nicely soak into the surface. You cannot achieve this result on the clear surface. Painting the model this way takes a lot of time and patience, but you can see that the difference is crazy. Therefore I like shading. There are missing small details and more weathering. I cannot forget exo stains. I am spraying them with a low pressure and highly diluted paint. Also good is to paint oil leaks from a messy radial engine. And we are almost done, but I forgot to paint the fuel drop tank. The parts contains positive rivets. It is nice, but even it is a nightmare if you want to fill pronounced seam lines. 
I tried to recreate the rivets with a micro thin balls and lines with a plastic fibers from residual sprue. The lines were okay, but the rivets not so much. You have two options. You can remove all the positive rivets and make them negative, or remove all the positive rivets and replace them with a special positive rivet decals. In any case, you must remove the rivets. I decided on decals. Quinta Studio recently released three rivet lines for different scales. The application is straightforward and the work with them is the same as with ordinary water slide decals. It looks interesting and the result is splendid. I will use them for a whole model next time. It remains to paint and add final details. For example, the engine section looks empty. There should be more wires and pipes. Okay, that is all. I finished the model in one month. The most time consuming was to design extra parts. Someone with a better 3D modeling experience can make it after a few minutes, but I'm not, so it took a few days. Also, shading wasn't the most straightforward task. In any case, it was fun and I learned a lot. I'm looking forward to another crazy detailed model. After that, I will probably make some... probably Wildcat. Or you can write me a comment what you like to see. Thank you for watching and see you next time.